أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأول الأمر منكم and always a reminder for myself أنا عبد كل عجي سدائف ومسكين وزال ومجهل but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Alhamdulillah that Allah grant us a life in which to see the holy month of Hajj and the beginning of the Hajj and the immensity of the blessings of Hajj and that we're in a eternal journey. On this earth every journey has a beginning and an end. The end of the 12 months is the month of Zulhajj and the immensity of its blessings that this is the month of pilgrimage, the month in which is the secrets of Suratul Kawthar and that which Allah to dress the servant from its realities and the immensity of blessings. And each symbol of movement has an eternal reality for ourselves. That as we're meditating and contemplating and asking Allah that we are making intention, Ya Rabbi to include us on the immense blessings of Hajj and that our soul to make the Hajj and that our soul to be dressed by its immense realities and that alhamdulillah the immense realities of hajj. And we've talked before about the immense reality of tawaf and the reality of the Kaaba and that what makes the ancient house in Mecca to have immense blessings is for whom occupies that reality. That it's not the stones that make it to be holy but that Allah has placed within it a reality and a reality of light. Means the one whom Allah put of a holiness is what's calling people to that reality. That when Allah describes that, قَلْبِ الْمُؤْمِنْ بَيْتُ اللَّهِ Because this path is for searching and for the seeker. Not that you think, oh it's just obvious and this is the house of Allah. Allah has no house but Allah wants us to seek. And once we seek through Qur'an and hadith, then Prophet begins to reveal for us that these hadiths Prophet is describing Allah is not on heaven, not on earth but on the heart of His believer. And that Allah by Holy Qur'an describes that Allah is with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And these are the best of those to keep the company, Allah is with them. So means that this tawaf has an immense reality for our everyday life. That Allah to make that location holy it has from the soul and the reality of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and that their arwa and their souls are present within that reality and that location. And as a result of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that his soul and a light from his soul because the soul can be many places at the same time. As a result of the soul being present there, Nabiin calls upon all Siddiqeen. Siddiqeen call upon all shuhada with Salihin. Means they, they and another hadith of Prophet describes that you be with whom you love. Means that Prophet will be with Allah he'll be with whom he loves. And the companions have this immense love for Prophet and they and their soul will accompany Prophet everywhere he goes. And then this continues that we will be with whom we love. When we love this Divine reality their arwa are located and moving in that direction. But not everybody's soul goes inside the Kaaba. 
But everyone's soul who has this ishq and love, their souls are called into that vicinity. Into the holy precincts, their souls are called into that vicinity. And those whom Allah granted from 124,000 souls upon this earth, 124,000 were granted Allah's dress of sincerity. As a result from these 124,000 their souls are in the presence of the 124,000 Sahabi Kiram, 124,000 Ahlul Bayt, 124,000 Nabiyeen and in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that their light and their love is located within the Kaaba and as a result of their presence their light and their magnetism, Allah called His nation Mekhaj. Because this is a time in which Allah wants to grant a dress and light and a gift upon Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadaihi wa Saliheen. That Allah wants to grant them a gift and as a result of Allah's Divinely gift upon them, then he allows an invitation to the souls and physicalities of people. Every year millions are called and drawn into the holy precincts to be dressed by the reality of Prophet Because every time they're making tawaf and they're coming to the black stone, that stone represents the ring and hand of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why you see it look like it's encased because every ring has a stone. And the significance of a stone is that there's an important reality and that they're called into witnessing that their souls are coming and saying that they heard the call of Allah and they have come. Come for what? Allah wants them to come to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad For La ilaha illallah to take the dress of Muhammadun Rasulullah Nothing from Allah comes without Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah doesn't want anything coming to him without the presence of his beloved. Because we are the people of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So the immensity of that secret that they're coming and they're making tawaf around that light and that inner light is making tawaf around Allah and all are be dressed by this immensity of light and the blessings of light. And those whom are not being gone or not been called with their physicality their ishq and their muhabbat demands that presence and to be in that presence. And that's why the endless hadith, the, the infinite understanding of holy hadith that you be with whom you love, imagine then the immensity of love in such an important time. That's why awliyaullah come into our lives and teach who you love is immensely important. For if you should love such an amazing soul, his love will call you for hajj. Because you be with whom you love and the one whom you love will always be with you and love never leaves you alone. Real love, we're not talking dunya love, dunya love you can't depend on anything from that. Heavenly and eternal love never leaves you alone. If you invest your time and effort in the love of Allah and qulini kuntum tuhibun Allah fatabiyuni yuhibukumullah and that formula that if Allah teaching in Qur'an tell your people who read this Qur'an if they love me and if they want my love, follow you Prophet I will love them, I will forgive them. So it means the, the gaining of Allah's love Allah is then calling us. As soon as we have that love, 
Allah wants to love us, dress us and bless us and our souls are moving. Because only through love and muhabbat and ishq the soul can move. You can't cast your brain to be in that presence. You can't think with logic, oh, okay I'll see myself there. If you didn't have the love, no you're not going to be there. But if you have the love, you don't even need a brain. You're safer off that way. Shaykh Nazim actually like when you don't have a brain, right? Because your brain think a little bit cause a lot of problems. Say a little bit of knowledge cause a lot of difficulty. This way is a way of the heart. When I love them, I love him, I love Prophet I love the holy companions, I love the Ahlul Bayt, I love the awliya, I love all those who represent that love. It's a no-brainer, right? He's a bit that lit, literally, I didn't very happy about that, yeah. That's good, you're saved. Why? Because we're not thinking, you can't logically say, okay, I'm going to cast my head there, I can't see it, I don't know what you're talking about. Ashaqeen, they feel it. They feel the heart is going to be in the holiest place wherever Prophet is, they are with him The certainty of that is the… and the litmus test of that certainty is your own love. If you don't feel it, you got something wrong with you and whatever you're doing. Maybe you didn't show it, maybe you didn't support it, maybe you didn't put a khidmat towards it. Maybe yeah, you, you know your, yourself best and maybe yeah, I didn't maybe put that much love into this. I heard it, I heard what he's saying. But those whom did, they sacrificed, they gave, they did their khidmat, they, they read the knowledges, they watched the, the knowledges, they, they're absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. Then they know like the certainty of their own hands and the, the faces of their children, the fragrance and the pheromone of their own children. They know that love that their soul is with Prophet with certainty. They may not see it, maybe they didn't reach a level of basira and to have vision, but they know that their love is sincere and that Allah would never leave their soul not to be with the one whom they love because Allah wants that companionship. Because Allah says, قُلِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِيُونِي Make them follow you. Teach them about love, they will follow you. And all those whom serve you should be teaching them to love you. This is Allah's command, not love me. Because the, 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 the ayatul Qur'an didn't say, love me, it said, if they want my love, if they want my love, follow you. So then all those whom serve that reality, their job is to propagate the love of Prophet the good character, the merciful example. And as a result of that love, our souls are labaik, Allahumma labaik, la sharika laka labaik. There's no partner with Allah there's nothing for you in the ocean of La ilaha illallah, that you're not there, you're not anyone to do with that. That's why we say La Sharika La. There's no, no partnership. But whom Allah is reflecting the light of that reality and the secret of creation and the ocean of creation, that everything exists within Muhammadun Rasulullah that love is calling us, not by brain, not by ear but by heart. That's why it's autopilot. That's why these 12 months we've been journeying, love, love Prophet love Prophet Once your heart is locked and you took the actions and you brought that love into the heart, then what Prophet described to Sayyidina Umar Farooq that you have to love me, Omar, more than you love yourself. And that is the station of faith. So these are the servants who are moving towards or are in the ocean of iman. Because all of hajj are the rituals of iman. Those who didn't get it, they fake it, take the tabarak of journeying there, 
because Allah would dress them from the immensity of that light. But the Ahlul Iman and the ones whom have that love, their souls are there to be in the presence of the one whom they love and who emanates the immense powers of Allah And as a result of every time they make tawaf and they complete the tawaf, the tajalli of Prophet is completing their seven realities. You have seven names and seven paradises, seven realities and that your life was to come onto this earth and to know yourself. Hadith of Prophet was like in school, when you get from the professor a bullet point, you don't get the whole lecture, that would be hours. It gives you an outline with three bullet points because you were supposed to take these bullet points and go and expand them. Hadith of Prophet are immense oceans of realities. Not that you read it, oh I understood it. No, you spend your whole life contemplating one hadith and see how much it infinitely opens and how many thousands of books have been written. And Allah describe if my, my words were like the pen, if the trees were like pens and the, and the oceans were like ink, my words would never finish. Allah's words manifest through the heart of Prophet which we call Manzil al-Qur'an, the house of where the Qur'an is emanating, where Qur'an came from. So it means that the, the infinite capacity of the holy words of Prophet has no limit and no end to its understandings. Nobody can have a, oh I understood it. No, you merely understood for now something. So when Prophet who knows himself will know his Lord. As a result they're being called into the Divinely Presence on earth and every time they make a tawaf Prophet is giving them more understanding of who they are. Their first tawaf, their first maqam, their first paradise, their second tawaf, their second paradise, their third tawaf, their third paradise. All the way to the seventh tawaf they've completed and Prophet has cast from that light into their soul so that they begin to know themselves. And as a result they're being dressed by the immensity of these lights, taught by ulul am that begin to know yourself, know your real self, your bad desires. Destroy those because those are the, the, the self that governing you, the lower self that governs you, make you to be angry and have bad characteristics. That's not your real self in which Allah wanted. When they destroy and, and understand what that self is, what its bad characteristics are and begin to fight and destroy that with the help of the shaykhs and the teachings of tafakkur and contemplation. Only then can they begin to understand what Prophet has been dressing them with. What name did they go? When they made a second tawaf was that name related to the praise? That in their second paradise Allah has a name that assists you in Divinely praisings. And what is that name of yours? Means everything is going to be revealed to the one whom reflects in, not out. The things that we do with our physicality is to take the donkey on the journey. But the gift is not for the donkey, it's for the soul. Means the physicality is going to the earth. Allah didn't call us to come there and receive all those blessings to dress your physicality. That's the tomato that in seven days is being rotten. Allah called you for that? Or that Allah said, no bring that physicality because that which is eternal is what I want to dress you with. 
So that you came to this earth to find yourself, to know who are your seven names. And in that second paradise you have a name like Abdul Hamid, the servant of Hamd. And as a result that name of Abdul Hamid assists that servant in praise. In this third tawaf they may come around and in that third paradise they may have a name that assists them in their fight and struggle against themselves, the devils to achieve Allah's satisfaction. It's important to know themselves. The journey is all about reaching that reality, means it's not something a empty ritual, I'll go next year, it doesn't matter you go next year your body or not. But your love and your ishq always keeps you on that journey. In your third paradise there may be a name for your fight and your struggle. And that that name and that self of yours that when you're meditating, contemplating, Ya Rabbi from my paradise, my if you, if you can't get the name because your meditation is not strong and your connection is not strong with the shaykh then ask, that's Ya Rabbi that from this first paradise that name that you have dressed me with, dress me from its realities and introduce me to that reality. Introduce me to the reality from the third paradise, a name that is given to me to assist me in my struggle. And continuing upward that each one, they ought to be, what's the name from this fourth paradise? What you've dressed it you know I don't know. From that name Ya Rabbi grant me its fires, grant me its realities. That the holy words of Prophet are beyond truth and understanding Ya Rabbi who knows himself will know his Lord. That which governs me they are my Rabb, my names are lords over my being and that they govern my character and my existence. Oh, before you can get to Rabbiul A'la, the Most High, you, you got to come down a little bit in humility and say, no, well first now the, the lords of the lowest dimension governing most people, their bad desires and vices, once they fight those lords and Allah find acceptance in their character, now it's what of the higher dimension what's governing you. If you stepped on the lower creatures then your name in your first paradise must be governing. Second paradise, third paradise, fourth paradise, fifth paradise, sixth paradise, seventh paradise. That what are their names, what is their, their governance over me? That what is the tajalli from them to me? And you keep meditating, keep meditating until the connection becomes stronger because this is never anything that can be given from the physical mouth. Because if the student didn't achieve the connection, what is the phys physical mouth going to do with the information? So give me the name, what are you going to do with the name if you don't have yet the ability to connect? So this is about a strong connection, a strong desire for the servant to know themselves and know that which governs them. Means every hadith of Prophet immense ocean. If we take just one hadith and live by it, everything would open of realities. So as a result of their tawaf, every tawaf they're being dressed, every tawaf they're being dressed. So it means when we see the hujaj they're making tawaf, we're meditating and keep asking. And that's why the wazifa for, for Arafah is a fairly large wazifa. Means that make the etiquette, recite the etiquette, asking Allah that dress me Ya Rabbi from the reality of tawaf, dress me from the reality of the seven names that you have given to me and the seven paradises that they occupy for our… whatever you have in store for me, I'm in need of it now Ya Rabbi. Ayatul Kareem with Sayyidina Musa had asked, 
whatever you have of good to me, I'm in need of it now Ya Rabbi. When he was asking from the well, when he did his service for the well and he asked Allah that if you have anything good in store for me, I'm in need of that now Ya Rabbi. Means the dialogue with the servant, with their Lord is to continuously ask. And as a result when the servants are making Safa and Marwa asking, Ya Rabbi from these seven springs, means as the servant is going from one to the other, back to the other, there are seven realities and seven springs within the heart of the servant of Allah And that they see their soul making the Safa and Marwa back and forth, back and forth asking, Ya Rabbi the last one that opened for me is the kawthar. That what Allah want to open these springs within the heart of the servant and asking, Ya Rabbi grant from the realities and we have articles on Nur Muhammad that you say the seven springs of Safa and Marwa. And you take it, that's why if you read the book, it was in the book of the seven springs. You read all of these things so that when this time starts you're ready. Because you're asking for the spiritual hajj, you park your physicality and you begin to meditate Thursday, Friday, Saturday's Eid. The Ya Rabbi tonight I'm asking from the reality of these seven springs and I see my soul moving in those springs asking to be dressed from the spring and to cleanse me from these springs, these realities until I reach Fitratul Islam. The highest spring in which Allah grants for us like a yaqeen and purity on our reality. And that was the, the reality of Sitna Hagar going back and forth, back and forth because she's carrying the Muhammadan haqqaiq and carrying the reality of Sayyidina Ismail as salam that this is a Muhammadan representative coming onto this earth with a direct bloodline of bringing Sayyidina Muhammad secret, much higher than anything from Bani Israel. They don't want to associate with that secret because it's not theirs and they have no right to it. So they say it was a different child because they're abtar, they cut themselves from that secret. But the reality of Sayyidina Ismail as salam, he's bringing the Muhammadan haqqaiq onto this earth in the preparation in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He can only be fed from Zamzam, he can only be nourished from the reality of Zamzam which is the kawthar. Means this is the month in which the kawthar is activating and dressing the secrets of Zamzam. And that's why this is the power of nine times twelve, the secret of Surat al-Kawthar is dressing Zul Hijjah. Allah is giving this as a bounty to Ummat al-Muhammad That, Ya Rabbi my whole life is this journeying, that nothing going to come easy, nothing going to come free. My whole life is to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, my life is about the struggle. Success is only with Allah Your understanding of success may be nothing close to what Allah deems as successful. Your fight is important, not your reward. Sidna Hagar is representing, look, look how much I go back, how much struggling, how much struggling, this child's going to die. And as right as she's about to give up she pound on the ground said, this child is going to die and that's the moment in which Allah accepted the struggle and brought forth the Zamzam, reappeared. That Zamzam is the kawthar so that this child is to be nourished and fed from the kawthar because through his holy light and self-sacrifice that his existence on this earth is the symbol of self-sacrifice and as a result of self-sacrifice is a Muhammadan representative. And if anyone doesn't understand what we described of tawaf, especially the 
interesting people who live there. When you're making tawaf around the Kaaba, what do you make tawaf around? What they call this section of Sayyidina Ismail He's buried there, he's so holy and his Muhammadan representative is so significant, Allah's making the whole nation to make tawaf around the physical body of Sayyidina Ismail Ruqna Ismail, huh? The little half circle you see attached to the Kaaba is the burial site of Sayyidina Ismail and you have to make tawaf around Sayyidina Ismail the, the people who don't understand anything and they say, oh, oh grave worshippers, we do grave worshippers. Everybody on Hajj is making tawaf around Sayyidina Ismail As a symbol, if you didn't believe the souls were in there, Allah has you making tawaf around the physical body of Sayyidina Ismail Why? Because of this Muhammadan haqqaiq and that it was established with self-sacrifice. He told his father, you find me patient with what Allah has commanded you of what he is going to be doing to myself. He was willing to sacrifice himself. As a result Allah honoured where I make the whole of his nation to make tawaf around you. So means these, these are immense realities, immense stations. And that when that Zamzam comes that Allah make the heart of the servants who drink from the seven springs, we call them Kawthari. So these shaykhs, they are very Kawthari and from the highest of them disseminating knowledge is Kutubul Irshad. That his responsibility is the guidance of the whole Muhammadan nation. Whether they, through their speak or through their soul, that to disseminate these knowledges and these realities to the hearts, minds and brains of whomever Allah wants that to be heard. Means these realities, these knowledges, <clears throat> they're not like anything else. The ones whom hear it, it burns into their soul. They like it, they don't like it, they like who it came from, didn't come from, doesn't matter. It's burned into their soul. Once their tongue releases this knowledge, it's disseminated, put into articles, papers, knowledges, here, there, wherever, inspired into the hearts and soul of ulama whom are internal or external. That they'll be inspired once that came through their tongue, that knowledge and irshad comes out and as a result it begins to dress the Muhammadan nation. And the nation whom they don't even know they're the Muhammadan nation. The ummah in which da'wah is being performed to them and they don't even know is being put onto their soul, put onto their soul. Because the world of soul is not like the world of form. When somebody will come into guidance is not in their understanding but Allah will be dressing their soul with these knowledges until a day it clicks for their physicality. So I was drawn to your channel and I read something on the book, I read something on an article. At that moment was the calling, means these are immense realities. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us. That only through the tafakkur and contemplation can we truly understand the immensity, the immensity of this eternal journey. And it's not about buying expensive tickets and fancy hotels. It's about having a heart that has love and ishq and discipline to just park the physicality and connect and as a result of that connection to be drawn and to be dressed and to be blessed by its reality. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa hamdalillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.